this time, uh, I'm going to recognize each of the commissioners for uh, some comments on the one-year mark uh, of this administration, and I'll begin with some comments of my own. Today is the one-year mark of the Shapiro Richards Castor administration. 365 days ago, Leslie Bruce and I took the oath of office. We've had 365 days of challenges, 365 days of opportunities, 365 days of change, and 365 days of progress. It's been a year of real reform and meaningful accomplishments. On that cold, sunny day a year ago, I said in my remarks that at our swearing-in that acrimony would yield to accord. It has. And that accord, that sense of common purpose, that willingness to focus on the collective good has made our many accomplishments possible. For those who grew accustomed to watching county government move at a glacial pace with little focus or direction, our pace, progress, and persistence over this last year has truly been amazing. The old mantra of that's the way it's always been done has given way to how can we do this better. While we have accomplished a great deal, there is much more to do. Nevertheless, on this anniversary, I think it's instructive to look at how far we've come and how we've excelled by the three benchmarks that I identified when we took office, improving morale, reforming county government, and fixing the fiscal mess that we inherited. We also managed to make critical investments in our future on morale. I was proud to assume the chairmanship of this prestigious board by a unanimous vote, but I'm more proud of the fact that every single vote of this board over the past year has been unanimous. That's not because we agree on everything or share the same ideology. It's because we understand that government works best when we put aside petty differences and focus on doing the important work that our constituents depend on us to do. Our national and state politics seem to be defined today by who wins the momentary battles and who trumps whom in the 140 character missives. We get the fact that people are tired of that nonsense and just want their leaders to lead and govern collectively. That is what we've done in Montgomery County and it would not have been possible without the leadership and commitment of Leslie and Bruce. I am extraordinarily grateful to each of them, and so should the people of Montgomery County be. A year ago, few would have given us much of a chance to change the negative culture that had become pervasive over the past several years. Stagnant salaries, increased health insurance costs, and decades of never seeing a county commissioner in your office shaped that feeling. A year later, our employees received a raise in 2012 for the first time in four years and we improve their health care plan without increasing its cost to them or the taxpayers. <clears throat> we grew connected to our nearly 3,000 employees through routine visits to their offices and regular emails from the commissioners and our communications team. Our director of assets and infrastructure with the cooperation of Ward Al Garen helped improve working conditions. We cleaned up and polished the courthouse after some gentle chiding by the district attorney. We also helped clean up OMP and HSC and modernize and brighten restrooms. We created nursing mother's rooms, beautified and opened a rooftop garden at HSC, and finally fixed the air conditioning at the Willow Grove Annex. We appreciate our county family, and they are key to our success on reform. When you take over the reins of a government that's been ruled by one party for nearly 150 years, change is inevitable. But we did not make change simply for the sake of change. Each policy modification, personnel adjustment, and budgetary shift had a purpose, to reform our county government in order to make it more effective <coughs> and efficient. Before we took office, our transition team dissected how county government works and recommended how it could be better. We adopted many of their recommendations, and now a year later, Montgomery County government looks and feels a lot different and works a whole lot better. First, we consolidated operations. When we took office, there were 58 departments. Today, there are 50, and we continue to look for ways to consolidate operations. A key structural change was the merger of five county departments that managed county-owned assets into a single department of assets and infrastructure. This change has worked by every measure. No longer a department stovepiped. Under our model, they are now effectively coordinating, consolidating, and communicating. This one change will result in a savings of $1 million a year for the county taxpayers. In order to communicate effectively to our constituents and with one voice, we consolidated the county communications efforts 
within the commissioner's office and through a multitude of means with an emphasis on social media. I'm particularly looking forward to the launch of the new county website this quarter. This consolidation has improved our communication and resulted in savings of over $50,000 across county government. We dramatically upgraded the structure and the skill of the solicitor's office led by the great Ray McGarry. Specifically, we changed the staffing model to one utilizing eight full-time, highly skilled attorneys rather than three full-time and 14 part-time attorneys. This has resulted in better, more coordinated legal services across the county, a reduction in projected spending on outside legal services by nearly $100,000, and the full utilization of legal referencing licensing in a shared agreement with the Office of Recorder of Deeds and the Register of Wills, which will save the county thousands while increasing the resources available at all three offices. The county consolidated its five economic and workforce development agencies into a new Department of Commerce. The newly formed department provides a one-stop opportunity for businesses looking to relocate or expand in the county, as well as individuals looking to enhance their skills. The Commerce Department coordinates a multitude of economic development arms, including the Redevelopment Authority, the Montgomery County Development Corporation, the Industrial Development Authority, and the Workforce Investment Board. Further reform will come to these boards and their functions in the coming weeks. The operating budget for the Department of Commerce, compared to the old structure, was reduced by 84%. This was made possible through the use of grants. Second, we reformed the structure and operations to secure new sources of revenue for the county and realize savings. We understood early on that the county's fiscal situation required us to find new sources of revenue without asking the taxpayers to foot the bill. So we hired a grants coordinator, a position that did not exist in county government when we took office. He has worked closely with the county departments, independently elected officials, our municipalities throughout Montgomery County, and nonprofit organizations to <coughs> secure new funding for vital services and projects. A highlight of this early success for this new position is the coordination with the Child Care Information Services of Montgomery County to help secure a $23 million grant through the Commonwealth's Department of Public Welfare. We know that there is value to advertising on county property and strategically marketing our assets to get a better return on the investment by our taxpayers. That is why we commenced an effort this fall to explore revenue generation from these areas. We also learned that we're leaving money on the table when it comes to collecting outstanding forfeited bail. Today the county is owed $9.6 million. Commissioner Castor is leading our effort to recover what is owed to the county with the strong assistance of President Judge Ferber and other members of the bench, our solicitor's office, and of course the clerk of courts. We understood that a substantial effort to identify a new broker for health benefits after our initial review showed the prospect of real savings. In a short period of time, that broker was able to renegotiate contracts and reduce broker costs and commissions to identify nearly $2 million in savings for the county. These savings are being shared with employees through enhanced benefits and increased options at no additional cost to them or the taxpayers. The county also selected a new broker for its commercial lines of insurance, and we, now have, have, we can now project a 13% savings for 2013 over 2012. The broker has also been leading an effort to reduce risk to employees that will improve our work environment and save money. Each of these new brokers is working in concert with our new Director of Human Resources and her newly reconstructed office. The Board of Assessments plans to invest $200,000 in technology that will allow its assessors to securely enter data into a system from remote sites, reducing duplication of effort and increasing data accuracy. Similar initiatives are being piloted in the human services delivery area to allow for better client interactions and reduce data entry. This is good government, making smart investments that will provide better services to our constituents at a reduced cost. Third, we dramatically increase the openness and transparency of our county government. We took office together just weeks after a scathing grand jury report that highlighted faulty policies, a lack of transparency and integrity, and questionable purchasing procedures. The report was instructive as we set out on our mission to reform county government. We adopted an exemplary ethics policy that is so good that it's been embraced by our independently elected row officers as well. Our policy clearly spells out what is appropriate and unacceptable in the workplace 
and places a premium on openness. That openness, though, is not confined just to our workforce. We strive to connect the public with what we do here, which is why we live stream all of our meetings, including this one, post, market, post meeting videos on the website, and have greatly increased the use of social media to keep our employees and residents informed. We threw out the old procurement policy that was often ignored and widely panned in order to adopt one that levels the playing field for suppliers and contractors and ensures a better deal for our taxpayers. We also publicly advertise all RFPs in order to ensure greater competition. This policy has been followed for each and every contract authorized by the commissioners. When our review showed that open space monies were being promised and then doled out with proper safeguards to protect the taxpayers and the land since 1993, we froze the program and now require contracts before any project is authorized. Fourth, our county government now better reflects who we are as a county. As we changed the many faces leading county government, we did so with an eye toward talent and professionalism. We wanted to hire the best of the best, and we did. In the process, our workforce and the appointments we have made to boards and commissions better reflect the growing diversity of our county. For example, for the first time in history, our county government is led by a chief operating officer who is a woman who'd been a key part of, who has been a key part of every important decision over the past 365 days. There is no one better suited to run a county or for that matter, a state government in Pennsylvania than Lauren Lambrugo, and we thank her for her extraordinary efforts. On the fiscal issues, our toughest task and possibly the singular biggest accomplishment of this administration has been resurrecting sound budgeting procedures and putting the county on a sound fiscal footing. When we took office, we inherited a 2012 budget that was $10 million in the hole and based on a number of faulty <coughs> premises. The sum total of the broken fiscal foundation left us with a $49.3 million structural deficit. We knew that we couldn't cut or, for that matter, tax our way out of the mess that we inherited. We had to be bold. We had to reform the process. We couldn't play by the same old stale rules of the game. The 2013 budget was assembled using a zero-based budgeting approach. Our <coughs> approach rejects the traditional notion of annual government budgeting, which takes the previous year's budget, assumes some amount of growth or arbitrary levels of cuts, and sets a new budget figure unrelated to the actual activities of government. Under our approach, each government function is identified uh, based on its mission, how to achieve that mission, how to measure its performance, <coughs> how to structure the department to best meet its mission, and what resources are required to then meet that mission. Our zero-based budget process produced a 2013 budget that is balanced with no tax increase, grows the county reserve for the first time in four years after 80% of it was drained and caused the county to lose its AAA bond rating, and makes a payment to the pension fund for our retirees for the first time in four years. In addition, the process allowed us to right-size the county workforce with a 2% reduction while we focused on meeting the core mission of county government, investing in our future. In our first several weeks in office, we discovered a litany of capital projects that had been deferred, ignored, or <coughs> discovered. A crumbling courthouse garage, a falling facade of one Montgomery Plaza, cracked steel beams in the Main Street Garage. We've spent a year assessing the need, exploring financial options, and will make critical investments to fix these problems this year. Commissioner Richards is captaining this effort for us and will speak to the specifics of this undertaking momentarily. In 2012, rather than continue to buy outdated technologies, we made significant investments in new technology that will reduce our dependence on in-house hardware and make us more a more mobile workforce with technology for the 21st century. For five years, our predecessors debated the need to upgrade the emergency communication system that our first responders use and our constituents depend upon. Under the leadership of Commissioner Castor, we authorized a contract last month to upgrade the emergency communication system at a fraction of the cost that the previous administration had estimated. Initial estimates put the cost of this project at $120 million. We negotiated a price of $29.9 million while strictly adhering 
to our new procurement policy with the utmost transparency and competition. For possibly the first time in the history of the county, we've undertaken a comprehensive space analysis to determine the best and most efficient way to utilize our buildings and improve the working conditions of our employees. Our goal is to right-size both our workforce and the amount of office space we utilize. We believe it's possible to reduce the amount of office space by at least 10% over the next five years as we build a modern day workforce and make use of the new technologies that we invested in. In addition to making critical infrastructure investments in 2013, we will make our county government much more accessible for those who need it most. Next month, we will introduce Navicates, who will revolutionize the way social services are delivered in Montgomery County. Navicates will be navigators and advocates for those who need human services throughout Montgomery County. Currently, someone who may need help from several social service agencies or programs in the county has to go to Norristown and figure out how to navigate the system themselves and to find out what services will be available. Our navigates, who will be stationed throughout the county, will work with these individuals to identify services they can utilize to help their situation and then advocate for them in receiving those services. Finally, I want to thank the talented and dedicated staff in the Commissioner's Office who have worked tirelessly to achieve all of the successes that I've enumerated and laid the foundation for our future success. I do not think there is a more talented staff in any county or governmental body in Pennsylvania. I thank each of them for everything they've done for our constituents and for helping make this the most exhilarating and rewarding year in my career in public service. We're not done reforming the function and the structure of county government and asking the fundamental question of why we do things a certain way and what is our core mission, all with an eye toward creating greater efficiency and effectiveness in Montgomery County government. It's been an extraordinary first year, and I am so energized for year two. I thank my colleagues, I thank our staff, and I thank all of you for your participation in this process.